Shalom. All praise to Yahweh Bashmi Asha. The blind city apostles of JMS. My name is Amnawa Allah. Coming at you never lesson. I'm not sure what I'm going to title this lesson, but the lesson is going to be about the word of the Lord being compared to a fire. And this fire is going to spread and it's going to set the earth ablaze. But not set the earth ablaze in the physical fire, but in the spiritual fire, which is the word of the Lord. And through that fire being spread throughout the world, that's how the world is going to be conquered. That's going to usher in the kingdom of Yahweh Shah. Okay? The word being spread like a fire. Because the word or the truth is what conquers all. This is Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesse is the father of David. Okay? And through that line of David, Yahweh Shah was born. You can read about that in the book of Matthew, the uh, first chapter. So Yahweh Shah was that branch that was going to grow out of his roots. Verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of the Lord, the one in the world uh, calls God, whose name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. His Spirit was going to rest upon Yahweh Shah. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Let's get a quick scripture on that. So, yeah, so the spirit of the Most High is going to rest upon Yahweh Shah. Okay? He was going to have the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. John 3 and 31. This is um, uh, John the Baptist speaking about Yahweh Shah. He that cometh from above is above all. It's about Yahweh Shah. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from above, from heaven, is above all. Because Yahweh Shah came from above, he came from heaven. Why? Because he was begotten of the, of the Father. Okay? He was begotten of the Father. He did have a physical father, which is Joseph, and a physical mother, which is Mary, who actually did have sex. But Yahweh Shah's spirit, but Yahweh Shah was that first spirit ever created. He was the only begotten son. He was the first begotten of the Most High's creation, meaning he was the first spirit ever created. So he came from above. And he was above all, and he is above all. Verse 32. And what he had seen and heard, that he testified that no man received his testimony. Because many people didn't believe when Yahweh shot when he came. They didn't believe he was the Messiah, nor did they believe the words that he spoke. His own people. The Israelites. Verse 33. He that hath received his testimony has set to his seal that the Messiah is true. So those who have received this test testimony set to his seal that the Messiah is true. They believe. On the truth, which is Yahweh Shah. Then I Yahweh Shah say, I am the way and the truth and the life. What's that? John 14, chapter, verse 34. For he whom the Most High have sent speaketh the word of the Most High. For the Most High giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Because Yahweh Shah was not given the Spirit by measure, meaning Yahweh Shah is the Spirit that Yahweh Shah was given. There was no measurement to it, there was no limit to his knowledge and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The only thing according to the scripture that it says that Yahweh Shah don't know is the day of his own coming. So Yahweh Shah was given vast knowledge. He was given knowledge more than any other man. Okay? So, uh, verse 3. Okay? So the Spirit was given to him without measure, man. He had a vast form of knowledge. He didn't have the knowledge that meant that the average man had. Verse uh, 3. And shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Why? Because he was going to have spiritual discernment. He wasn't going to judge by the sight of his eyes, by the physical appearance, but rather through the spirit. In verse four. But with righteousness, or no, or no, was he going to reprove after the hearing of his ears? He was going to discern spiritually. Verse four. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. That's talking about what? That's talking about this knowledge. Okay? He can smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And that's with this word, man. Because this word um, reproves people. This word corrects people. Because the word is likened unto a sword, the word is likened unto fire. But you can get that later. So it says he's going to smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. I mean, he's going to smite the earth with his word. All right? Let me get a quick scripture real quick. All 
Um, Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. Is it not my word? Is it not my word like as a fire? Save the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So the word is like a fire. And the word is like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Okay? And that's the lips. That's the um, breath of his lips. And that's the rod of his mouth. That word. But let's read on. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7. For the mercy of iniquity doeth already. I'm starting from verse um. I'm starting from verse seven. For the mercy of iniquity doeth already work. That's talking about Esau. To be more specific, at that time, that was talking about the Roman Empire. So the mercy of iniquity doeth already work. Meaning, in the Roman Empire, the devil Esau was already in power. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He who now letteth will let was talking about what? It's talking about the Most High. Because you know, pursuing the book of Abus, that Psalm 75th chapter. In the sixth verse on down, tells you the Most High put it down one, he set it up another. So the Most High lets, he lets those rule who he chooses to rule, he puts it down who he chooses to put down. So only he who not let it will let, it's talking about the Most High, until he would take it out of the way. In other words, Esau was going to rule, but the Roman Empire was going to be in power until the Most High took him out of the way, meaning until the Most High brought him, brought him out of his power seat. Verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed, Esau, okay, whom the Lord will shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, right? He's going to consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's his word. And how is he being consumed with the spirit of his mouth? Through his prophets teaching his word. Okay? He being They're being consumed by the spirit of his mouth. And they're being revealed. Because we're the mouthpiece of the Lord. Continuing on it says, And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's too much of thermonuclear destruction. Okay? So Yahweh Shah is not going to only destroy him by thermonuclear destruction. He's going to destroy them by the spirit of his mouth, which is this word, which he's using his prophets to do. Let's go to the next verse. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. Right? Now you know when it says daughter of Zion, that's talking about Israel. When it says daughters, that's talking about the woman of Israel. But all of Israel is going to be um, washed away of their filth. But it says, when the Lord shall, ha shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall purge the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment, and by the spirit of burning. See, that's when we're going to be purged, man. And to be purged means what? To be purged means, means to be cleansed. So we not so not only is there going to be a cleansing, by, but not only is there going to be a cleansing by fire, it's also going to be a cleansing by the spiritual, by the word, man. Okay? They're going to be a cleansing based upon a word. So it says, um, And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And to purge means like, um, it's like to remove something. To remove like an impurity from something, man. To rid something of whatever's impure or whatever's um, undesirable. Okay? And that's going to happen with this word, man. Let's get the book of um, Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. It says, In this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. So the word is going to be preached. <clears throat> excuse me. So the gospel, which means good news, is going to be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. So all over the world, this gospel is going to be preached for a witness unto all nations. So the word is going to be preached in different countries, different continents, different hemispheres as a witness to, unto all nations. Why? That the prophets had went to all nations, was in all nations, <clears throat> and taught amongst these nations. And they knew the um, destruction that was to come. Okay? They knew the destruction that was to come. So when this destruction comes, it's not going to be like, you know, oh, we didn't know. Nah, because you got prophets all over the place, man. If I'm not mistaken, you got a, you got a brother in South Africa. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me get another scripture to go into um, Isaiah 4 and 4 real quick. I'm going to get a quick, another quick scripture. Remember we talked about Israel being purged? Isaiah, which means to be cleansed. He, uh, Ephesians 5 and 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And it's talking about sanctifying and cleansing the church, which the church represents who? It represents Israel. By the washing of water by the word. So with this, uh, this short show that we just did, that um, is being done right now, 
uh, we run into our words compared to a hammer, compared to fire, as well as being as well as well as being compared to um <clears throat> to water, and that's going to cleanse Israel. That's going to purge Israel. So going back to Matthew twenty four fourteen, and the and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right, and then shall the end come. That's when the end is going to come. Okay, that's when the end is going to come. The end is going to come. When his word is taught amongst all the nations, man. Amongst all these different nations, the word is going to be taught. Now let me get to the book of, um, let me see if anything else here I want to get to. This should be about it. Now this is the book of, um, uh, uh First Ezra chapter 4. Now basically there was a contest where, um, you had uh you had Zerubbabel, you had uh, many different men, right? It basically was a contest stating that um see if I can get we'll go to the first chapter real quick. Or third chapter. Give you a little insight on this. All right, it says, um, 2nd Edges 3 and 1. Now when Darius reigned, he made a great feast unto all his subjects, and unto all his household, and unto all the princes of Media and Persia, and to all the governors and captains and lieutenants that were under him, from India unto Ethiopia, of an hundred twenty and seven provinces. And when they had eaten and drunken, and being satisfied with going home, then Darius the king went into his bedchamber and slept, and slept, and soon after awakened. Then three young men that were of the guard that kept the king's body spake one to another. Let every one of us speak a sentence. He that shall overcome and, and whose sentence shall seem wiser than the others. Unto him shall the king Darius give great gifts and great things in a, in a in token of victory. As to be clothed with purple, to drink, in, to drink in gold, and to sleep upon gold, and a chariot with bridles of gold, and a head tie of fine linen, and a chain about his neck. And he shall sit next to Darius because of his wisdom, and shall be called Darius his, Darius his cousin. And then every one wrote his sentence and wrote his sentence, sealed it, and laid it under King Darius's pillow, and said, "When the king rise, when the king is risen, some will give him the writings, and um, and of and of whose side the king and the three princes of Persia shall judge that his appointed sentence is wisest, to him shall victory be given as was appointed." And the first wrote, "Wine is the strongest." The first, the second wrote, "The king is the strongest." The third wrote, "Women are strongest," but Above all things, truth beareth away the victory. So now, I'm not going to read the whole context, of course, because it'll be a long chapter. I'm going to write that back to, to um, I'm going to go right to the root bell statement. Now, one man said wine was stronger. One man was once one, one man said wine was strongest. One said the king is strongest. The root bell said woman is strongest, but the truth prevaileth over all. And Zubel was right when was right when he said woman are stronger than the king, and when he said they are stronger than um than um uh. Um, wine. He was right, right? But he said, truth prevaileth above all. And I'm going to get deal with the part with truth. This is, um, Zeru uh, uh, Second Edges 4 and 33. Then the king and the princes looked upon, looked one upon another. So he began to speak of truth. O ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in his course. For he can pass through the heavens round about and fetch up his course again to his own place in one day. Is he not great that maketh these things? Therefore, great is the truth, and stronger and stronger than all these things. Because right by the truth, by by the Most High, and his, or rather by his Son, by the by the word of the Most High, who set forth the blueprint in Yahweh Shah and the angel, in Yahweh Shah, begin with Yahweh Shah and the angels, begin with Yahweh Shah and then the angels. All things were created. So by the truth were all those things made. Therefore, great is the truth, and stronger than all things. All the earth. Crieth upon the truth, and the heaven blesseth all. Blesseth it. All words shake and tremble at it, and with it is no unrighteous thing. Right? All words, all things tremble at the truth. That's why they say truth hurts. The truth can hurt more than anything else. Okay? And with it is no righteous thing. Through the truth, kingdoms can fall. Imagine you find out there's a scandal between, uh, in the, in between the, um, with the president, and that truth comes out. That can cause the whole entire kingdom to fall. 
And with truth, there's no right, there's no unrighteous thing. Why? Because the truth is pure. Verse 7, verse 37, wine is wicked, the king is wicked, women are wicked, all the children of men are wicked, and such are all their wicked works, works, and there is no truth in them, and their righteousness also they shall perish. So wine is wicked, the king is wicked, and woman is wicked, right? It says, verse, and it says, um, there's no truth in them, and their unrighteousness also shall perish, right? It said more to that verse, that's the point I wanted to get. Verse 38, I read the whole verse, but, you know, you get, you get my drift, because it says, uh, all children of men are wicked. And such of and such are all the wicked works, but you get the you get the gist of it. Verse thirty eight. As for the truth, it endureth and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. So the truth it endures. Meaning what? The truth is continual. It always endures. It's always gonna last. And it's always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. The truth conquereth forevermore. That's what the scripture says when the gospel was preached throughout all the world, then shall the end come. With her, there is no accepting of persons or reward. It's talking about the truth. There is no accepting of persons. No matter what rank you are, what status you are, what your authority is, the truth accepts no man's person. The truth accepts no rewards. No gifts can be given to the truth. No gifts can be can be given to um get rid of the truth because the truth is always strong. But she doeth the things that are just and refraineth from all unjust and wicked things. And all men do well like of her works. Neither is in her judgment Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness, and she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Blessed be the Most High of the truth. And with that, he held his peace, and all the people then shouted and said, Great is the truth, and mighty above all things. There you go. So the truth is great, and the truth is mighty above all things. And when this word is spread, this truth is spread, then shall the end come. And we all know, Yahweh Shah is also, many things are compared to the truth, which is the word. Milk is compared to the word, which is truth. Water. <clears throat> um, woman. Because the word um, Sophia, which is a female name, means wisdom. W wisdom is likened to a woman. And, how sh and uh, the, um, the wine is likened to the wisdom. Um, the hammer. Which is all things likened to wisdom, likened to the word, which is truth. But most of all, Yahweh Shah in the book of um, John, the 14th chapter, Said this about himself. John chapter 14, verse 6. Yahweh Shah saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Yahweh Shah is the way, he is the truth and the life, and no man goeth to the Father but by him. And Yahweh Shah, just as truth conquers all, Yahweh Shah is going to be like a roaring lion, and he's going to conquer all these nations when he comes back after the truth is spread throughout the world. So with that, I hope you really learned something, and I'm going to say shalom.